Hello everyone, my name is Ron and in this video I want to shed light on two important things. First is how important it is to not only save your money but to invest your money into the stock market. And the second is that this process doesn't have to be complicated at all. You can automate it and make it simple. So to give you a little bit of background, I've really only started to invest into the stock market for the past three years. And one of my biggest regrets is not starting earlier than that so that I could leverage my time in the market. The younger you are in investing into the market, the more time you will enable your money to have to gestate and make money on top of itself. Looking back in hindsight, I really didn't feel like the educational system provided enough knowledge about financial literacy, about the stock market, you know, let alone how to execute a trade or how to even go about purchasing a share, uh, which is you know, basically having part ownership of a company. School tends to generally teach individuals how to, in the end, become good employees, but never how you can use the stock market as a vehicle in order to achieve this financial freedom of wealth. For me, I wasn't taught finances at all. How I literally got started was I remember very vividly going on Amazon.com and ordering a bunch of finance and investment books at Prime. And of course, like the, the irony about this is that I don't no Amazon stock and I you know I just remember reading a lot and the more I read the more I realized that we're all kind of in this rat race trying to get out trying to achieve this this financial dependence this, this sense of freedom so that we can spend more time with our family and friends but how do you go about doing that you know after reading a bunch of books like The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham and the Boglehead books on investing I can honestly say that I realized how important it is to do three things okay one live below your means two automate your investment payments no matter what so that's another way of saying stay the course oftentimes during for example a bear market where the stock market seems like it's it's crashing Society becomes sort of this echo chamber of everyone saying sell your shares, sell your shares, you know, liquidate your assets when if you stay the course time and time again has proven that you will reap the rewards in the end. And also the third is to invest a surplus in a well diversified portfolio over the long term horizon. We're talking 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the line. I don't have the intention of working until I'm 65 years old. I want to enjoy life as much as I can. I want to spend more time with family, with friends, and I don't want to be stuck at the computer looking at graphs all day. I want a simplified portfolio that I could just automate over time. The investment industry in the United States specifically is the most profitable and largest in the world. But first things first, what is the stock market? So you can kind of think of the stock market as this place where an individual can purchase shares of a company, which equates to part ownership of a company. So for example, if you purchase one share of Microsoft, ticket symbol MSFT, at a specific price, you are technically part owner of the company. You can also sell your shares in the market as well, hopefully after making a profit, or you know, in some cases, not making a profit, taking the L, and then selling at a loss. You can buy stocks on different platforms. So platforms like Charles Schwab, Ameritrade, uh, Fidelity, Vanguard, Robinhood, <coughs> etc. I personally have folders in Vanguard because it's, you know, it's been around forever, it's reputable, and I also like the color red. What we're going to focus on here though are not individual stocks, but what are called index funds. And you can kind of understand what index funds are when you compare it to an individual stock. So think of a stock, so a single company like Microsoft or Amazon or Tesla or Apple as being individual eggs that you want to put into a basket, say your investment basket. An index fund is like you buying a super egg, a huge egg that contains hundreds of single eggs inside of it. So when you put this super egg, this index fund, into your investment basket, you're not just putting a single egg in there, but all of the companies that that super egg contains. It's like buying hella companies at one time. So there's 20 benefits 
that index funds will instantaneously grant you. And I'll make that in a separate video. But two that are very important about index funds is that when you purchase an index fund, you not only gain instant widespread diversification, but with that you subsequently minimize your risk. You're more risk averse. So think about it. If you're going to essentially purchase multiple eggs, hundreds of eggs at one time, if one of them fails, then you don't completely lose your money. It's sort of, it's sort of evened out by other companies in the index fund, so you don't absorb that great of a financial hit. But if you put all of your money into a single stock and that stock tanks, then you absorb 100% of the hit and no other companies to hedge against its loss. You lose everything. Index funds are also funds that they're a type of mutual fund that are passively managed, meaning that you are in total control. And I believe, you know, the bottom line is I believe no one is going to care more about your money than you do. You work hard for your money, so why leave it in the hands of anyone else? The truth is that the investment industry wants everyone to believe that they can beat the market. And you know, index funds are different. They're not designed to beat the market. They're designed to mimic the market. They simply track its benchmarks and try to replicate the market. This is where investor psychology comes into play. So a lot of people think that they can beat the market, and some of them do, but most of them don't, and most of them won't. So if you want to be safe, go with index funds. So now let's talk about the most simple way that I believe to invest. It's called the three funds portfolio. So this is a specific portfolio that is highlighted in Taylor Lattimore's The Boglehead Books. So the portfolio essentially holds three index funds. Right? Listen up. A Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund called VTSAX. A Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund called VBTLX. And a Vanguard International Market Index Fund. So that encompasses emerging markets overseas, and that's VTIAX. Purchasing these companies gives you ownership to more than 17,000 companies while minimizing risk just in case one fails. Notice also that their expense ratios are very, very small as well. And this is a very important parameter to, to look at. And expense ratios are basically payments you need to make um, annually, so once a year, in order as an investor to still keep your head in the game with that fund. If an expense ratio, for example, is 0.04, you would have to pay $40 every year for every $10,000 you invest in that fund. But then the question becomes, you know, how much money that I have to invest should be allocated with what asset fund? This is called asset allocation. And it's essentially determining where your money goes. It's giving direction to your money. It's probably one of the most important investment decisions you will make just because it truly dictates how much of a return you will potentially make. So for me, I personally use what's called a 90-10 split. So there's a chart that shows different success rates and I'll, you know, I'll show that right here based on different mixtures of asset allocation. But I personally do a 90-10 split. So 90% into VTSAX and 10% split equally between VTBLX and VTIAX. And I do this for a couple of reasons. The first being, you know, I'm, I, I believe I'm still a bit young and, you know, I think I'm young. And so I can afford to take a little bit more of an aggressive approach where stocks are more aggressive than bonds, and I don't have my own family that would otherwise, you know, that, that would otherwise make me a little nervous uh, being this aggressive because returns would impact not only myself, but my spouse and my kids. And the third is that I'm still really in the wealth accumulation phase. So it's very important for me at least to err more in the aggressive side to optimize return. What's also cool about this portfolio is that it's a low cost, buy and hold strategy that can be automated and only needs to be rebalanced really once a year. Basically how I do it is I choose one date in the year that's very important to me, that's very easy for me to remember, so my birthday, and I rebalance the ratio of these funds with respect to each other if any one of them deviates by more than 10%. And how I rebalance is I basically add more dry powder, so, um, so spare change, for example, 
and to the necessary funds as a lump sum. This lump sum is accumulated and you know separate from my emergency fund. I'll go ahead and take a little bit out of my pay stub and sort of allocate that as, as dry powder when the time comes. The other question remains, you know, where do you put these funds? So I would recommend putting VTSAX and VTIAX into your individual brokerage account because they qualify for what's called um, a QDI, so Qualified Dividend Income, which is essentially a lower tax rate that you would have to pay. Then I would place VTBLX into either a Roth or a Roth IRA for tax saving purposes. So always, always remember as an investor that taxes are also the name of the game as well. We want to essentially minimize taxes as much as possible because they eat away at your profit significantly. They're like a thief in the night. So now you might be wondering, you know, what is the point of this portfolio? And you know, it's only three funds. It's so simple. You know, what's the real magic behind it? So the real magic behind it is when you apply what's called compound interest, which is basically your money making money on top of itself. It's, a, it's essentially like a snowball effect, right? It's a snowball effect. And sooner or later, your growth becomes this sort of exponential vortex of wealth. So a rough example would be, would be this. If you have an initial deposit of $10,000, right? And you contribute the same amount annually, over a period of 10 years with an estimated rate of return of 8%. And I chose 8% here to be really conservative. It's important to know that historically, the 10-year return of VTSAX alone had been 13.5%. So with that said, you get a future balance of $178,000. If you extend this out to 15 years instead of 10 years, you get around $325,000. And if you extend this out to 20 years total, you get $540,000. So what I did here is I basically put three graphs next to each other side by side at the 10 year, 15 year, and 20 year time frame mark. And what we see is a net gain of about $147,000 between the 10 year mark and the 15 year mark. So just a five year difference and a net gain of $215,000 between the 15 year mark and the 20 year mark. Just for giggles, you know, if you push this to 30 years, you see a future balance of a well over $1 million. Congratulations, you're a millionaire. <laughs> To visually understand compound growth over time though, just take a look at the green area. So as you see that as time goes on, it shifts to a more exponential growth pattern. So the green area is essentially your money making money on top of itself. But what if you invest more? What if you live below your means, well below your means? What if you invest a surplus? Then what happens? So in this example, the initial deposit is still the same. It's still $10,000, but I personally, and this is just me, don't judge me, like don't come for me. I personally make it an effort to contribute at least $50,000 a year. So in over 10 years, we're looking at $803,000, 1.5 million at 15 years, then 2.5 million five years after that, and then 6.2 million 10 years after that. You know, this is the power of compounding. So in conclusion, I strongly suggest having a portfolio comprised of these funds. VTSAX, VTBLX, and VTIAX. You know, they have low cost, low expense ratio to continue investing in them regularly. It's an excellent buy and hold strategy. And compound growth works wonders in having your money eventually work for you. I also want to make it a point to say, you know, whoever is out there watching or watching this video, start early. Live way below your means. You know, I personally contribute around 80% of my take home money, you know, after fixed monthly payments, after expenses, I invest the remaining amount, 80% of that into investing. Invest the surplus. So any overtime you have, you know, personally for me, any OTI I have, I invest it and, you know, continue to invest regularly. And that's really another way of saying automate your investments. The last thing I'd like to say is to remember to stay the course no matter what. 
All right, guys, I hope someone out there found this video helpful in some way, and I can't wait to make even more videos. You know, I would like to say I'm obviously not a financial advisor by any means, and I do recommend everyone to do their due diligence before investing in anything, but I do hope that some parts of what I said were taken as educational doses of information. Okay, guys, stay safe out there. I know it's, it's pretty crazy out there right now, and I'll talk to you all again, okay? Aloha. Have a great day.